Hello. In this one, I'm going to be converting this spare Backman uh, coach into E8-5000, which is the prototype Brute Carrier, another parcel fan. And if you stick around to the end, you'll see another one. I haven't made a video of that one yet. yet. So we'll start by stripping this one down, first by taking the bogies off, being careful not to lose that spring. And we'll put all the parts in my Backman spare coach parts box. Along with all the bogies and other bits and pieces. The full size version of this was converted from a CK SC15170 in 1970. Because this model is a BSK, I'll have to do a few modifications to get the roof and the underframe correct. I suppose I could have used a, a, a CK model, but this is the one that I had spare, so this is the one I'm going to use. Now, now we've got the body off, we can put all these parts in the spare box as well, the sides and the interior. We use those parts for another project, if I can think of one. So the next thing to do, after we've got this roof off, is to carve off all of, or most of, the end detail, i.e. the steps, the corridor connection. We'll leave the uh, lamp brackets and the RCH cables, because they should be there. So continuing on with the strip down, I'm going to take the footsteps off, because they're all in the wrong place and the wrong size. And we've got all that sanded down. And then we'll take off the steps underneath the guards compartment. And then we'll move that battery box from the wrong position to the correct position for a CK. And that will be because my mate Brian will notice if I get it wrong. And he will tell me if I get it wrong. Good. So that's the chassis sort of modified to suit the vehicle that we're doing. Now to fill in those gangway ends. And once they're filled and sanded down, I'll put the roof on and then mark the edges because I need to file the, ed uh, the, the sides flat as where that pencil mark goes. And that's because this vehicle parcel van had flat sides like its cousin the Gov except these ones were made out of uh, GRP or glass reinforced plastic or its other name FRP fiberglass composite plastic I'm sure Brian and a few others perhaps might uh, chastise me for using a wagon brake handbrake wheel but it was all out on stock at the time. It's from a Cambrian BAA kit. So once I made a simple frame uh, and then glued it on, that was the underframe pretty much done. And with that done, uh, it was then time to start the guesswork. Because I've got no plans or drawings for this thing. It was a bit of guesswork, a bit measuring off of pictures and a bit of artistic license so it's probably not a hundred percent accurate but it looks good enough and with the windows cut out it was then time to drill out for the handrails and door stops and if i thought cutting one millimeter strips of five thou plastic card for the 31 banding cutting one millimeter chunks of 0.75 millimeter rod for hinges and door stops Ugh. made my eyes go gooey yeah not to make do with just plain flat hinges because I couldn't work out how to make or purchase such small riveted channel 
and I decided on a small plastic strip for the handle door handles as well because it was just slightly easier to do and the reason this video is probably about a week late is because I got this far and then realized that I'd made the sides four millimeters too deep I was handing out to start all over again it's sort of amusing now but it bloody wasn't then so I thought I'd copy the way that Backman do their sides just in the unlikely event I decide to take it apart one day I had to make a false floor as well to keep the the balance weight in and to clip the sides into the chassis and after that it was time to tackle the roof what with Backman's over exaggerated panel lines they had to come off for scraping them and then sanding them and then I had to move a couple of the ventilators as well I had to fabricate some rain strips over the doors as well and then clip it all together and then it was off to the paint paint booth to give it a coat of primer and when I say primer what I actually mean is grey paint it's just a base layer so that it brings out all the imperfections so I can go back and sand any bits that need sanding fill any bits that need filling and after sanding and correcting it's then back for another coat just to get it all even and I can take the roof off and get the roof painted dark grey black so when this coach was uh, constructed in 1970 or converted in 1970 blue was the colour so unfortunately Jim there's no green paint again today so that's a thin coat down and then we'll go for a second coat just to get it all even so while we're watching this paint dry I'll uh, just tell you about where all my photographic research comes from which is normally Paul Bartlett's uh, excellent website I'll see if I can link it in the description and for numbers it's normally one of my RCTS books or Brian because he's just a guru on numbers so I was painting the handrails so I noticed that I hadn't put the glazing in so that was the next thing to do that was cut out of 40 thou plastic sheet glued into position and then it was back to painting the details and that will be handbrake wheel, lamp brackets, RCH cables and the door handles that are painted gold instead of brass because brass paint doesn't look like brass paint well, I don't think so so gold was done instead it looks a bit bright but once the weathering was done that toned it down considerably after that it was a coat of gloss varnish ready for decals transfers whatever you want to call them and that will be fox transfers because I've got a vast selection of them I just needed to find a sheet with the correct numbers on cut them out get them stuck on and with one side done put a bit of masking tape down the side marked them off with a pencil and then transferred that masking tape to the other side so they would all be lined up correctly oh and the yellow disc is brute circuit only and that come from uh, rail tack transfers and there was a lot of cutting and shutting with transfers so it was a good job my son bought me a magnifying glass for Christmas the coach that I used for this came with Commonwealth bogies which are wrong for this coach and I didn't have any Mark 1 bogies in stock so I had to go and buy a pair and PR1 bogies are the wrong type so I had to convert them into BR2s which is just the addition of a, a large welded plate on the top edge I didn't need to do that but, and you can't see it after I've painted it anyway but Brian will tell me off if I don't do it so that's why I've done it and because I didn't lose the spring in the beginning we can get that back on the coupling bar on screw the bogies on and perhaps I should have painted the wheels and brake blocks before I put the bogies on but it doesn't really matter I like to paint the brake blocks 
They look a bit harsh when they've just been painted, but again, after the weathering process, it tones them down considerably. And the first stage is washes, panel lining, just to accentuate all the details. And again, I'll say that I learnt all this off of uh, Panzermeister 36. I'll see if I can link his excellent video in the up here somewhere in the corner, panel lining and stuff like that. Then it was off to the spray proof again for some brake dust and then back on the bench to get some dry brushing just to bring out some details on the bogies to make them look a bit more lifelike instead of just flat, plain. And that's it, done. Let's get it spinning round on the rotisserie before it gets a spin round on the layout. And there we go, into revenue earning service on its evening commute from Meachamsteed to Banbury beyond a classic western. Different view of the railway, seeing some of the operational electronics and as that disappears into the distance or into the tunnel I've just got time to tell you that the next video will be something to put in this van. See you next time.